subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button hello viewers welcome to news week south asia a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on south asian nations let's begin with the headlines first Indian security forces eliminate Lashkar and Hizbul leaders in Kashmir. Pakistan frees terrorists from Lahore jail under the guise of coronavirus threat. Taliban claims the attack at the military center in Afghanistan. And India finding new ways to fight COVID-19, Pakistan underestimating the threat. Despite the worldwide lockdown due to COVID-19 pandemic, Pakistan is trying hard to revive terrorism in Kashmir. However, Pakistan's tireless campaign of unleashing terror inside Indian territory is being given a befitting reply by Indian forces. Recently, proactive Indian defense successfully eliminated the top commanders of two parked back terror organizations, and it's not a one-off breakthrough. but the forces have been successful in busting all the nefarious anti india plots hashed in the corridors of islamabad and rawalpindi islamabad's executive wing specializing in terrorism received a huge setback as indian security forces led by indian army eliminated two commanders and four other terrorists in its series of operations in jammu and kashmir this week The operations that were carried out in the backdrop of a sudden spike in the infiltrations along the Indian border culminated in the killing of Riaz Naiku of Hizbul Mujahideen and Haider of Lashkar-e-Taiba. Taking a critical jibe at Pakistan, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi said, "There were people who were busy fomenting other types of viruses even when the world was fighting the pandemic of COVID-19." even as the world fight covid 19 some people are busy spreading other deadly viruses such as terrorism such as fake news and doctored videos to divide communities and countries the media and people across the valley have hailed the killing of riaz naiku as killing of a dreaded terrorist riaz naiku was responsible for killing several security personnel and civilians and was on the run for last 8 years and was finally trapped in a joint operation in bekpura village of the pulwama district one of his associates was also killed during the encounter Naiku had taken over as chief of the Hizbul Mujahideen after the outfit's Kashmir commander Burhan Wani was gunned down in July 2016. His death is seen as a major blow to local militancy in the region as security forces claim to have wiped out the group's presence in the region. Hum log itna confirmed hai ki iske andar militant hai ya to andar mein hoga kahin hide out mein hum log cordon ko nahi hataye कॉर्डन कंटिन्यू रहा है नेक्स्ट डे कल जाके सुबह नौ बजे जब मिल्टन ने पहले फायर किया फिर हमारे फोर्स ने रिटेलेट किया उस रिटेलेशन में जैसा कि हम सब जानते हैं एचएम का चीफ जो था पिछले एट साल से एट ईयर से के एक्टिव था और पिछले तीन साल से एचएम का कमांडर था उसमें मारे गए द गनिंग डाउन ऑफ द टॉप हिजबुल कमांडर केम थ्री डेज आफ्टर एट इंडियन सिक्योरिटी पर्सनल लॉस देयर लाइफ इन टू सेपरेट इंसिडेंट्स एट हंदवारा in Kupwara district of Kashmir at least 3 personnel of the central reserve police force were martyred and two others got injured on 4th may in an ambush by terrorists in Kaziabad area of Handwara belt in another major counter terrorism operation indian army eliminated two terrorists including the commander of Lashkar-e-Taiba Haider a pakistani national who was active in the north kashmir area 
Following intelligence inputs that terrorists had taken civilians hostage in a house in Handwara's Changimula, a joint team of Indian Army and Jammu and Kashmir police carried out an operation and successfully extricated trapped civilians after 12 hours long battle. However, five security personnel including the commanding officer of Indian Army and a police officer were also martyred in this encounter on 3rd May. With coronavirus pandemic spreading chaos everywhere, Pakistan is trying to take advantage of the crisis and push terrorists into Jammu and Kashmir. However, everything has a life period and the deadly coronavirus pandemic will also eventually end one day. But Pak sponsored virus of terrorism is continuously spreading and mutating itself. If you compare COVID-19 and uh, terrorism originating from Pakistan, the life of COVID-19 is very short, another two, three months. But the life of terrorism originating from Pakistan is very, very long. We have seen it from 47. It's my belief that until unless we teach a lesson to Pakistan and convey to Pakistan that the cost-benefit analysis for Pakistan with regard to terrorism is going to be very, very heavy, exemplary. Pakistan is not going to be here because it's, it's obsessed. It is obsessed with India and it feels that only by terrorism it can defeat India. As Kashmir is heading towards more peace and prosperity, Pakistan, being envious of this development, is busy hatching wily plots to incite terrorism in the valley. However, in what could be a major blow to Pakistan's devious agendas, India has decided to ramp up global pressure against Islamabad and get Pakistan blacklisted for terror financing at Financial Action Task Force. Pakistan's claims of having sympathy with Kashmiris got once again exposed this week when its sponsored terrorists resorted to launching a terror blast in the region to harm the civilians. On the other side, civilians residing at the LOC are also complaining of indiscriminate firing from the Pakistan side, a report. A blast in Agam village of Handwara district in Kashmir injured at least seven civilians on May 3rd. The blast occurred when some people were cleaning drainage. The injured also include two children. We were cleaning drainage, so we didn't know what was going on. What was going on? What was going on? The injured were rushed to Handwara district hospital. Deputy Superintendent of the hospital, Dr. H.R. said the two children who received foot and abdominal injuries were being referred to a bigger hospital as their injuries were serious. Now we have five children. There are two children. We are referring to two children because one child has injury in the abdomen and the other child has injury in the abdomen. Most probably the tendon cut. Civilians living near the border area are also bearing the brunt of Pakistan's frustration in Kashmir. Rattled by the repeated failures at the hands of Indian security forces, Islamabad has broken almost all records of initiating unprovoked ceasefire violation at the LOC. Residents of a border village in Kashmir, Nayaka says that Pakistan targeted their houses and other residential areas during cross-border shelling between the troops in Majakote sector. दूसरी तरफ हमारे रमजान का महीना चल रहा है और हमारे रमजान के महीने में जैसे ही लोग अफ्तारी करके तो नमाज की तैयारी के लिए बैठे थे तो शेलिंग शुरू हो गई है। तो हमारे पाकिस्तान की तरफ से हमें बहुत इलाका जो है ये मरा गांव जो है ये पूरा इसमें फायरिंग की जद में आया है। इसमें ये सामने दहाई According to the villagers, firing began when they were preparing for their evening prayers after breaking their Ramadan fast. We are doing prayer in the evening, at the 
तो शालिंग शुरू हो जाता है हमारे छोटे छोटे बच्चे हैं वो घबराते हैं रोते हैं भागते हैं कहाँ छुपे सिंस नाइनटीन फोर्टी सेवन आफ्टर द पार्टीशन ऑफ इंडिया और पाकिस्तान कश्मीर हैज बीन अट बेड ऑफ वायलेंस कॉमिशेज बैक्ड बाई पाकिस्तान यूजिंग टेररिज्म एज इट्स मेन टूल इस्लामाबाद हैज कॉन्टिन्यूड इट्स प्रोक्सी वॉर अगेंस्ट इंडिया If latest media reports are to be believed, Hafiz Saeed, the chief operative of proscribed terror group Lashkar-e-Taiba, has been released from jail, and along with him, other terrorists too have been set free under the guise of coronavirus pandemic. Islamabad has been misusing COVID-19 as a tool to forward its nefarious terror objectives. The latest move of setting terrorists free from jail is just another addition to its long list of favors being done to appease terror leaders who work at the commands and wishes of Pakistani military establishment and the inter-services intelligence. A report. The coronavirus pandemic has delivered an unexpected gift to Pakistani terror groups. Just about all of their operatives who were in jail have now walked free in the name of stemming coronavirus. The terrorists who were put behind bars as a condition to keep Pakistan out of Financial Action Task Force's blacklist are now living in their homes, including LET Chief Hafiz Saeed, says a media report. Instead of framing policies for tackling COVID-19, Islamabad is outlining strategies to resume full-fledged operations of the terrorists so that they can carry out attacks in India amid the ongoing medical emergency. Highlighting on the operations of terror groups, Sona Denia, a research analyst from European Foundation for South Asian Studies, says that terrorists function in Pakistan without any fear of consequences. Pakistan has been dubbed a safe haven for terrorism, so it's allowing terrorist organizations like Lashkar-e Taiba and Jaish-e Mohammed to operate within Afghanistan, within Pakistan, without any repercussion. Last month, in a tweet, the Punjab province's chief minister informed that nearly 50 inmates in a Lahore jail were tested positive of coronavirus. Such situations gave Pakistan an alibi to set terrorists free at a time when the international focus is on the deadly pathogen. Media reports suggest that Hafi Saeed, the mastermind of 26-11 attack, is also one among those terrorists who have been released from the Lahore jail. Saeed's release does not come as a surprise because the Lashkar leader was arrested under immense global pressure and threatening of the Financial Action Task Force or FATF of it getting blacklisted for not curbing terror financing. Last year in June 2019, I believe, um, they arrested Hafiz Saeed. And uh, Hafiz Saeed has wanted, has a b bounty on his head for 10 million US dollars uh, for his involvement in the Mumbai attacks. And the Pakistani government knew where he was uh, all along because he attends seminars, he preaches in public. Um, but when they arrested him, it was because they were under scrutiny of the FATF. They were about to be blacklisted. So they did a big political move. In spite of having its name in the grey list of FATF with a review due this year, Pakistan has been concealing the ground realities and fudging numbers as the focus of the international community remains on the pandemic. The recent spurt in terrorism-related incidents in Jammu and Kashmir is a proof that Pakistan not only hasn't focused on the pandemic in its own land but has also been using the crisis to funnel terrorism into India by providing monetary and military support to the terrorists. Pakistani military does have ties to terrorist organizations in Afghanistan, in Jammu and Kashmir, and it was estimated that after the Soviet withdrawal, withdrawal, when the United States themselves were sponsoring the Afghan Mujahideen and going through Pakistan to do that, the Pakistanis 
military diverted the funds, the weapons and the militants towards Jammu and Kashmir for, to launch an insurgency against India. And it's not just using funds or giving weapons, it's also accommodating them. The research analyst from EFSAS believes that various sources of financial support to the terrorist groups is one of the main reasons behind the broad proliferation of terrorists within Pakistan. Terrorist groups would not be able to operate if they didn't have the funds for it. So right now we see four different primary ways with which uh, terrorist groups can acquire funds. So the first is state sponsorship. There's also legal activities, legitimate activities and popular support. So of course the terrorism uh, state sponsorship is in the case of South Asia is often seen with Pakistan. When you also have illegal, illegal activities, as is seen in Afghanistan with the Taliban, they use opium, opium production. Then you have popular support, which is uh, often seen in Pakistan, uh, where commoners uh, support the cause of a terrorist organization. And one of the best examples for this is lashkar e taiba who has different branches uh, that they operate. So their, so to speak, charity branch, uh, jamat ud uh, they, let's say they can, all over Pakistan by their offices, they can put little collection boxes where people can donate whatever they can. And this is also a, a way for them to raise funds and it makes it very difficult to trace back uh, who are the people donating because it's anonymous and it's just common people. And this is also very dangerous because it raises a sense of legitimacy um, for, for terrorist organizations. And the last uh, major source of terrorism financing is legal activities, which terrorist organizations can can use uh, and they can disguise them in a way that they can still operate. One of the best examples is Al-Qaeda and their honey businesses in Yemen and the Middle East. Pakistan has been consistently supporting terrorists whose single motive is to disrupt peace in India. After the international community mounted pressure on Pakistan, it admitted to having hundreds of terrorists operating from its soil but has barely taken action against them. Terror attacks in Afghanistan continued this week after Taliban launched a deadly attack in the Helmand province, killing around half a dozen Afghan security forces personnel and leaving several injured. The escalating rate of violence, even after a peace deal, has worried the civilians about the peace ever returning to the war torn country, a report. A truck bomb attack at a military center in Afghanistan's southern Helmand province jolted Afghan civilians this week who have already seen a couple of terror attacks last month. According to an intelligence officer who survived the attack at the military center, the terrorists detonated a truck bomb near the facility for members of the National Directorate of Security and Army. The Taliban, claiming responsibility for the bombing in Helmand, also said it attacked a center where at least 150 members of the Afghan army and intelligence wing were stationed. The May 4 attack came as U.S. Secretary of Defense Mark Esper said attacks by the Taliban were increasing, despite the United States and the insurgent group having signed a peace deal in February. The <laughs> The Amnit Mili Zuakunam was a Pashareke Parato, Yomur Bamijraka, the Motor Bampa Natijeke, Zamanga, the Mili Amneto, the Faisuakunu Pinza, Sartiri Shaydan Sividi, Awazahmandi. Although the latest attack was on Afghan security forces, but several other attacks in the civilian areas by Taliban and other extremist forces have kept the commoners worried about their survival in the nation. The coronavirus pandemic has added to the troubles of the nation, which is already suffering from many other problems like poverty and political instability. <laughs> Pakistan 
Ce-s că nu mai tona? Și ar mă duru să nu dăm așa, dar mi-i grion, că nu mă arme să nu mă arme, că nu mă arme să nu mă arme, că nu mă arme, că nu mă arme, că nu mă arme. Afghan government forces in the last two months have suffered heavy casualties across the country. The violence poses an immediate threat to a fragile peace deal between the United States and the Taliban, signed in February, as the military is forced to fight an emboldened Taliban with less U.S. support. Viewers, Today we will show you contrasting pictures of two South Asian neighbours dealing with coronavirus. While India is relentlessly working to flatten the curve by implementing strict lockdown and developing everyday multi-pronged strategies to challenge the pandemic, its neighbour Pakistan on the other side is dealing with poor implementation of lockdown, low quality medical facilities and economic emergency with its leaders paying no heed to the nation's deteriorating situation, a report. With steadily increasing number of COVID-19 cases, Indian scientists and research bodies are working at war footing to combat the deadly coronavirus. The country's scientists have deployed themselves over time to provide small and big solutions, from predicting statistical trends and making mathematical models to developing rapid paper-based test kits and low-cost ventilators. In a recent development, scientists in India have come up with a cheaper diagnostic test for the coronavirus that can deliver results to patients within 30 minutes. Named after a fictional detective character created by Indian filmmaker Satyajit Ray, Feluda is a paper-based test strip developed by a group of seven scientists at a lab in Council of Scientific and Industrial Research in New Delhi. The test uses a CRISPR-Cas-based approach to diagnose COVID-19. The paper strip has two lines, a control line to check if the strip is functional and a test line which appears if the case is positive. This is a paper-based test. It's like a pregnancy test, which you can see and dip-dip. It's like a color of a color. So this is a test, a paper-based test. तो ये हमारी जो IGIB लैब है दिल्ली में इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ जीनोमिक्स एंड इंटीग्रेटिव बायोलॉजी यहाँ के कुछ युवा युवा वैज्ञानिक हैं उन लोगों ने तैयार किया हुआ है और बहुत ही शानदार टेस्ट है ये कि ये 30 मिनट के अंदर बता देता है कि किसी को कोविड हुआ है या नहीं हुआ है। A contrary and negligent picture has emerged from India's neighbour Pakistan, which is touching heights of failures in dealing with coronavirus pandemic. Like the rest of the world, coronavirus outbreak is a real crisis for Pakistan. Yet the government does not seem to be prepared for the emerging disaster. The seriousness of the government in dealing with the pandemic can easily be gauged by the bizarre remark made by Pakistan's Minister for Planning and Development, Asad Umar, on the ongoing global crisis. While addressing the media, he said, that it is due to God's wish that coronavirus had not been as lethal in Pakistan as has been in other countries. Allah Ta'ala ka karam hai ke Pakistan mein aur Pakistan jaysay mamalik joh hain wahaan par joh is khitte mein joh mamalik hain wahaan par yeh bimari utni molak nahi sabit hui ke jitni yeh Europe ke andar yeh America ke andar hui hai aur yeh farak joh hai yeh koji thoda bhoat farak ka nahi hai اگر آپ دیکھیں تو امریکہ جو ہے اس میں اٹھاون گناہ زیادہ عبادی کو برابر کرتے ہوئے اور اس عرصے کو یکساں رکھتے ہوئے جب ہم موازنہ کرتے ہیں تو اٹھاون گناہ زیادہ ہلاکتیں ہوئی ہیں امریکہ کے اندر ایک سو چوبیس گناہ زیادہ ہلاکتیں ہوئی ہیں برطانیہ کے اندر اور دو سو سات گناہ ہلاکتیں زیادہ ہوئی ہیں سپین کے اندر In the wake of increasing number of coronavirus cases the country is still not carrying out enough number of COVID-19 tests. Till now, the country has reported more than 24,000 reported cases and 600 deaths. Meanwhile, healthcare workers in Pakistan have been voicing concerns about the inability of Pakistan's healthcare system to cope with the increasing number of COVID-19 patients. Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan, on the contrary, has decided to disregard all their concerns 
and ease the nationwide lockdown, despite the fact that the number of coronavirus cases has been accelerating on a daily basis. The easing of the lockdown comes with many across the country already openly flouting its restrictions and gathering in public during the ongoing Islamic month of Ramadan. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shreya Sabijay signing off on the behalf of entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.